The Omnia Radiation Balancer brings you why is muscle testing a good way to test sensitivity to EMF. So today we're going to talk about the human energy field um, and I have with me David Wells who's an osteopath and a kinesiologist. Uh, and David's going to answer some questions uh, all about uh, how EMF can affect our body's energy field. Um, so David, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Um, my opening question, the big one, uh, what is kinesiology? Kinesiology. Um, applied kinesiology, which is what I practice, is a, a diagnostic process. But it's a diagnostic process that's based on manual muscle testing. Um, and when we look at the process of manual muscle testing, we're, we're, we're focusing on the body's nervous system. So we put in a sensory input and we monitor the body's response to that. Fundamentally, it's, it's that simple. And that's what we call a muscle test. Um, so what can a muscle test tell us? Essentially, a muscle test is a, is a stress test on the body. We stress the system in some way and we monitor through one of your skeletal muscles to see how it responds to that stress. Now that may sound a little basic um, to, to, be, to be basing your diagnosis on, um, but when you understand how the, how the nervous system in the body works, it's actually a very good way into the brain to see how it responds to things because we are using the skeletal muscles as a monitor and the skeletal muscle tendons uh, and joint capsules and ligaments is where all of your nerve endings are. So we effectively have a super highway into your brain through this nervous system. And if you do full strength muscle testing, um, we're incorporating as many um, muscle fibers in that test as possible. So it's actually a very accurate response of the way your body reacts to things. And it can tell us about <coughs> what? About allergies, about insensitivities, well, intolerances? It, what can it tell us? It can do. It can, tell, it, it can answer certain questions about those things, but it'll tell you about anything that you want to stress the body with. You can stress it with chemicals, you can stress it with physical injury, you can stress it with, uh, with mental emotional issues. You're only monitoring the, the brain's response to those things. Right. So part of kinesiology, obviously, is that the, the body has its own electromagnetic field. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit more about that, how that operates? We know, we, we know that the body operates on certain um, electrical potentials. Um, all the cells in your body are, and the molecules in the body are polar. They have a negative and a positive end to them. Um, but the signals that are sent from your nervous system um, operate on changes in potential difference across cell membranes. That's how we transmit nerve signals. Um, so if you take, for example, the, 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 probably the most commonly used electromagnetic monitoring system, that's having an ECG done on your heart. That's the way these electrodes that are stuck on the body um, measure what's going on. They're actually measuring electrical electromagnetic output from the heart muscle. And those signals are extraordinarily strong. If your equipment is, it, it is adequate, you can measure these in the room next door. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be done on the body. Well. Um, so it's a very, very strong signal. Mm -hmm. um, so our bodies are kind of radiating as well, right? But they're radiating in frequencies that are natural to us, is that right? Absolutely. Um, the coming back to the ECG machine, you know, the ECG machine is tuned to pick up particular frequencies from the heart muscle. But all of the organs in the system uh, will, will radiate electromagnetic frequencies, but the frequencies will be at different strengths and different frequencies. Um, but they're all in a, a similar range, is that right? They're in a similar range. I mean, obviously everybody is individual and there are variations in that range, but people are going to fit within certain parameters. Yeah. Right. So you wouldn't use a, an ECG machine to pick up brain waves and vice versa. Right. 
one needs to pick the right bit of equipment for the right organ. Yeah. So one of the reasons we're here is to talk about EMF. Um, and we know that a lot of people fail the muscle <coughs> test for EMF. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us why that might be? Electromagnetic frequencies are, are operate across a very broad band of frequencies, of course. Yes, they can be they can be mains from from two forty volts. They can be anything up to uh, up to X rays. Yes, we know that those vibrational um, patterns are going to influence the cells in your body in some way because they are polar. Um, and different frequencies are going to influence the body in different ways. I think one of the reasons that people fail the, the mobile phone challenge, whether that be from a phone signal or a Wi-Fi signal or a Bluetooth signal or whatever, they're kind of in the same range, um, is that non-ionizing radiation in that spectrum tends to to push apart the molecule structure. Of all of our cells? Of all of our cells, yeah. yeah. Right. It, to, 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 to make a distinction, you've got non-ionizing radiation and you have ionizing radiation. X-rays and above is ionizing radiation. Yeah. Mobile phone signals is non-ionizing radiation they will tend to push apart the molecular structure. The ionizing radiation is tending to pull apart the atomic structure. Yes, yeah, so your neutrons and your electrons are tending to fall apart. Yeah. So if you imagine when people come into close proximity of strong um, mobile phone, cell phone signals in that range, it's pulling apart your molecules and let's say your molecules are not held together very well because you're not particularly healthy or you have nutritional deficiencies or whatever, then you may run a risk of those falling apart more easily than somebody that's in good shape and their molecules are strong. So, and I think that's why we see people responding so badly some people responding so badly to, to mobile phone signals because they're effectively falling apart right. at a molecular level. Right. Yeah. A lot of the debate at the moment <laughs> is all about you know whether um, only ionizing radiation is harmful for humans and whether non-ionizing can be harmful for humans. And it seems that most of the regulations are saying, well, if it's not ionizing, then it should be safe. But but you're saying that it, that there's more to it than that. Oh, for sure, yes. And if you... History tends to show bad things up a long time after the event. Right. So when you look at the invention of x-rays, when, when Marie Curie and her team were doing work on that, you know, they were working in this field of ionizing radiation for most of their research life, and they died of cancer. <laughs> right. Yeah. But... They didn't for know the that, good. But, but, but they didn't know that at the time. Yeah. And these are leading scientists of their day. Right. Yeah. So when you put that into perspective, it's no surprise that, that some people are saying we're seeing negative effects from non-ionizing radiation, but there are lots of people that don't believe it yet. And I'm sure in years to come, it will be so obvious. obvious. Yeah that people will start to take note of it. But there is already good research out there that shows that certain cells in the system do respond very badly to non-ionizing radiation. But whereas we can almost, like the scientific <laughs> community can agree of the, the, the impact of ionizing radiation because they can see it a bit better or detect mm -hmm. it a bit better, that's why they can now advise against x-rays. For things like EMF radiation, it's a slow kind of, it's a slow soft tap, well, isn't it? It's like some, it's attrition. Well, it's all a slow, it, 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 it's all a slow process in accepting new information. Mm. Okay. So Bruce Ames did a lot of the work into oxidative stress, mm. um, and they were monitoring the, the, the chemistry through urine tests and various other things to see what was coming out there so that they could tell how many oxidative hits the cells, average cells, were taking every day. And it's, you know, they'll take up to a certain amount, but beyond that it's going to start to cause damage. Right, yeah. Which, which of course means early aging and degenerative conditions and all of that. Yeah. 
yeah. it was Bruce Ames that did that work. Right. So in terms of uh, the impact of what we're absorbing in our energy field on a day-to-day -day basis because of the phones, um, the cumulative effect and the attritional effect of that, can you talk to us a little bit about that, what our cells are gonna, how our cells are going to respond? I think this is one of the reasons that, that modern medicine doesn't pick up on this very quickly, because it isn't categoric. You can't say to somebody, okay, five phone calls a day and you're going to get cell damage. It doesn't seem to work like that. It seems to be more a product of the health of the individual cells at that time. So some people are going to be able to tolerate a lot more of this, uh, of this EMF than other people. In the same way that, um, you know, I've seen people in my clinic that are, you know, in their 90s and they've smoked and drunk all their lives and they look as fit as a fiddle. Other people are getting lung cancer at 30. Right. You know, we're, we're not all individual. We can't, we can't fit us into those categories so accurately. Mm. And I think that's one of the, the problems of addressing this purely from a scientific perspective is because it loves to be able to say, okay, uh, more than 10 phone calls a day with your phone to your ear, you're going to get right. cancer. It doesn't really work like that. There's going, be, different. there's going to be a huge spectrum of, of, of no effect to great big effect, and somewhere in the middle, you know, with your standard sine curve here, you're going to have most people fit into that category. Right. But there will always be those that yeah. cheat the system, as it were. Just like today, you've got people who are suffering from electromagnetic hypersensitivity. You know, th those people who are walking around can't get sure. into any Wi-Fi field, can't yeah. have a phone, and that sort of thing. So there's I there's level there's ends of the scale, isn't there? Oh, there's every for sure. And, yeah. and part a part of that is going to be as a result of your of your prior exposure to EMFs. I think uh, part of it is going to be a product of your general health. Part of that is going to be a product of just who you are as a collection of cells and how well this set of cells responds to it. Mm, sure. So it's very difficult to, to say you're going to react this way mm. or you're going to react that way. Right. People react differently. Yeah. But there are, there are common themes that we, can, that we can almost take for granted, which is that there's a man-made electrical charge um, which is foreign to your own vibrational frequency that, that your body likes to be in. For sure. And so there's a collision there. There's, a, there's yeah. almost like a combat. <laughs> Uh, between yes. the two fields. I think one of the problems these days is, is the level of exposure that we have. Um, radiation is nothing unusual. It's normal. Mm. You know, the sun are, radiates. The sun radiates and if you stand it for too long you're going to get burnt. Right. This, the, and, the, and that's an energetic transfer. You don't have to go and touch it. You just go and stand out there, right. you know, and you, your body is exposed to to the ultraviolet rays, um, and some people are going to burn faster than other people are going to burn. Right. And it's not just dependent on your skin color; mm. it's dependent on your body your whole physiology. Yeah. Um, yeah. But 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 radiation is present in in all over the world in in many forms. The Earth itself is radiating. So, so, so some rock, you go down to, to, to Cornwall in the UK, it's well known that some of the granite down there will radiate at radioactive frequencies. And, Which people, are for us. and people are so concerned about this from nuclear power stations, mm -hmm. but there are actually rocks that radiate naturally like this anyway. Right. You can go into, into old houses in Cornwall that are made of granite rock with your Geiger counter and you'll get outrageously high responses. So people have been living with this for, for forever. So it's, so it's not that, that EMFs is something that's new to us. We've been living in, a, in a, an environment of, of vibrational patterns for forever. Mm. But now the level is different. Mm. And we're surrounded by fluorescent lights, mobile phones, uh, transformers. Right. Uh, you live next to a, um, a railway track. You've got overhead power over, uh, over your house. Mm. We're bombarded with this stuff now. We live in this kind of electromagnetic, electromagnetic smog, if you like. Right. 
So let's let's think about you know because we have a product that uh, that um, seeks to help people who are under stress from all of this radiation that uh, mm. that has been brought into their energy field. Um, if a cell is under threat from uh, the radioactive smog that it experiences, um, there are products out there that try and block the radiation. But what we do is we try and harmonise the cell. Can you talk a little bit more about? The, the impact of harmonizing the cell and how that can be brought about. Yeah, um, it, as you know, it's not possible to block those electromagnetic frequencies from coming into your system unless you go and sit in a lead box. Right. We're going to be exposed to this stuff. Yeah. The, the difference between providing a product that helps to, to, to cancel out the effect of this is, is to find a set of frequencies that, that almost cancel out the negative effects that these are going to have on your cells. Mm. You can't block those signals from coming into you. Right. We know that certain frequencies are going to go straight through the system. But certain other frequencies will, will get blocked by bone tissue or by muscle tissue. And these are the ones that are potentially damaging for us because they don't pass through. They actually stop in the system and then your cells and your molecules and your atoms are vibrating in harmony with those, with those signals. So your body comes become, becomes like an antenna that actually looks it, it, to... Exactly. To, yeah. So your body is almost like an aerial. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want it to be an aerial. Yeah. We want to allow these things to pass through um, or for the patterns that stick within us are harmonized by something else. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the, 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 the easiest ways to think about this is you may remember when you were uh, doing physics at school and we had these these trays of water and we created with a vibrating rod at one end of this tray a set of waves which we watched pass through mm -hmm. and then we put another rod in at the other end and we, and, we, and we vibrated this at the same frequency but we put it in so that the, the high peaks that the waves were generated at this end came at exactly the same time as the high peaks at this side right. what happened? Well, the waves got bigger in the middle. They doubled in size. Mm. But what happens if we now vibrate this rod at the point where the high peaks come at the troughs from this side? So we've now got two exactly the same frequencies, but one is a peak and the other is a trough. What happens in the middle? It Doubles cancels out. out. Yeah. Well, that's what we want to try to achieve with some kind of EMF protection device, is to find that frequency that balances out those signals so that whilst they're still coming into the system, our body is no longer vibrating in harmony with them. Right. So almost like if you take the cell on its own as part of your collective millions of cells, that cell, rather than choosing to, um, to radiate alongside the EMF, is now choosing to harmonize with the it presence is. of the other frequency. Exactly. Yeah. So I wanted to talk, I'm glad you mentioned water because I wanted to talk about water. Obviously we are 70, 75 percent, sometimes more depending on where you are in the body, mm -hmm. but we are 70 percent <coughs> water. Um, so what does, what role does water play in this? When EMF comes into your energy field, what, is, is water like a conductor? We know that the that the water is going to vibrate in harmony with all vibrational patterns that come into the system. Um, and because we are a large percentage of water, the chances of shaking that at the frequencies of your EMFs is high. Um, but I think it's a mistake to think only of these EMFs affecting the water. It's going to affect all of the other cells too because all structures, right down to the atomic level, are going to start vibrating in harmony with things that are at their level. It's The perfect example of this is to, is to look at um, musical instruments with strings. Yeah. Yes. Um, or, or, or any real musical instruments that, that vibrate. If you go and uh, hit a note on the piano, I'm not a pianist, but let's say you go and hit a C. 
all of the other C's, even though they're at different octaves, are going to start to vibrate in harmony with that. You don't have but to the go... But the D won't. The D or the exactly. E won't. Right, yeah. you, you don't have to go and strike those other strings. They will start to vibrate in harmony already. Mm. And this is exactly what happens within our system. So not only is the water going to start vibrating in harmony with patterns that are at its vibrational level, but other structures are too. So let's say you're 70% water, there's 30% of other things right. that are going to start vibrating possibly at different frequencies. Mm. Yeah. And it's a very complex makeup, isn't it? But, but, it, but the thing that's shared is this electromagnetic frequency in your body, yes. which is a very complex network of, of different kind of tunings, isn't it? So yeah, absolutely. I think, I think in terms of of convincing yourself of what happens to the water is actually quite an easy thing to do. You can do anybody can do this in the kitchen. You get yourself a Pyrex bowl and you put some water in it and you strike it. Right. And if it if it's a nice bowl, it's going to start to vibrate and that vibration will carry on for a long period of time and at certain frequencies, different bowls, different sizes, you will notice that water really start to become quite agitated. Mm, right. If you do this with, with something like a Nepali singing bowl, which is going to ring for three or four minutes when you hit it, if you put water inside this, then you really see these patterns coming out and the water will actually be jumping off the surface because that vibrational pattern is transferred into the water. So if you think of the effect that something like that is going to have on your system, we like to think that, that the vibrational pattern from the singing bowl is going to be positive to us. Right. It may not be. Yeah. Maybe that your body doesn't like it. Right. And by the same token, the way that the water and all the other structures vibrate in harmony with the electromagnetics around us, some of those things are going to be negative. Mm. Some may have no influence on you at all. So if we don't do anything about this, what is going to be the impact on ourselves? We can't say categorically that your cells are going to respond in this way. Research has shown that the new cells, cells in developing fetuses, cells in, cells in young babies, are influenced quite radically um, by radiation from mobile phones. But it doesn't mean to say that all of the rest of the cells or the cells in adults are not influenced by this too. Um, we can't say categorically how the effect of this is going to come out in the, in the individual, but we know that it will. So we have to be vigilant t to the changes that are happening in us. We can't, we can't just think, oh, it's only going to affect this or it's only going to affect that because I haven't got these, therefore I'm not reacting badly to it. We don't know this. Right. We don't know that after 50 years and it's not going to give you issues in your liver or your knee or, or your brain. Right. But it's going to cause something. Because mm. conventional medicine wants to say, well, that causes that. But we don't have that situation. We do don't we? have that situation because we're all individual mm -hmm. and the vibrational patterns that are coming into us from this electromagnetic smog is, is coming in with this super complex compound of all of these frequencies that are in our system anyway. Mm -hmm. And some of those frequency patterns are a product of our, of our thought processes and all, that, all of those are different. Mm -hmm. So the way the electromagnetic frequencies is going to be interpreted uh, in your system is going to be different from my system, different from everybody else's system. Mm -hmm. We know that it's going to have an influence, but we can't always predict what that's going to be. We've, uh, we've looked at some of the science as well, and it shows that there are links to cancer, there are links to <coughs> DNA breaks and DNA strands being uh, torn apart and broken and that sort of thing. But basically, all your cells are, uh, uh, are living, obviously, electromagnetically in your body, and they're also reproducing, is that right? So 
while they're reproducing, is there a strain on the reproduction of the cells in terms of like the way that your there body mu- is? There must be, because your system is going through a process of, of, of breakdown and repair continually. Yeah. This is an ongoing thing. So the research has shown that new cells tend to respond quite badly to mobile phone signals, but that doesn't mean it's just newborns, it can be in the elderly as well, because yeah. the process of body cells are going through this process of regeneration all the time. Yeah. Great. So what can we do to protect ourselves? What are the things that we can do? We discussed a little earlier about using some kind of device to try to balance out those frequencies. Yeah understanding that we can't put a block mm. on them. Mm. Um, so what we have to do is to try to find... Oh, it's the word I'm thinking of, yeah. Mm. Try and find a medium that is going to, that is going to emit those balancing signals into you. So one of the ways of protecting yourself is to buy a blocker that you can buy on Amazon or something like that, which seeks to try and block the radiation from the phone. Mm-hmm. Um, but our product is all about harmonizing the cells so that you create a kind of force field. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us why that might be a better way of, of just trying to block the, the frequencies on the phone? The, uh, there's two issues there. The first is that the EMF that you're being exposed to is not just from your phone. Right. There's somebody standing next to you on the, on the MRT, on the MRT on the yeah. also on their phone. <laughs> yeah, the right. guy behind's on his Wi-Fi and yeah. the one in front's on Bluetooth. So you need to give them a, and, a patch as well, right? Yeah. And the train itself is an enormously powerful electromagnetic radiator. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the fact that you walked into the station in the first place, you're already bombarded by this stuff. Right. So the phone isn't just the issue. Yeah. A good EMF protector is trying to protect you against this EMF smog, which you are in permanently. So by trying to put a block between this one device and your ear, isn't really going to have much effect on you. Mm. You're in this. This is a cloud. Yeah, yeah. So, so we don't really want to try to physically block those signals from coming through like we said before, that's not possible Mm -hmm. because they're going to be going through many mediums anyway. The only way you can really block all of those signals is to stick yourself inside a Faraday cage, which is an EMF free zone. That's impractical. So what we have to do is to to allow your body to harmonize these signals better. So it isn't a blocking process but I think the wrong way to think about it. Mm. It's a process of harmonization. Right. So we need to Brilliant. be so we need to be in contact with a source that's emitting the balancing frequencies, right. which is within our energetic space, so that we are in contact with that as well. Right. In the same way that homeopathic remedies can be kept in your pocket and we can still pick up changes from those even though you've not actually ingested them. Right. Yeah. Because it's a vibrational, energetic medium. Mm. So, 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 so long as it's within our energetic field, we're going to, our body's going to be sensing that in some way. Right. And it will either have a beneficial effect or it won't. Mm. And that's where the muscle testing is a useful tool to use because we can assess your system as an individual to say, well, how is this responding to this protection device? Right, yeah. Is it protecting you? Mm. Or is your body actually not interpreting this in the right way or it can't sense it or whatever? Mm. And I know through uh, your work that obviously people change from day to day, right? Yeah. And from week from to week, the to body minute. is always changing, <laughs> right? Right, so, but, um, but what, what we found is that, uh, in general, people are, you know, uh, struggling with the, uh, the impact of EMF fields. Um, I wanted to talk to you also about 
grounding as well because mm. uh, we, we have a, yeah. a, 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 our product has a similar impact of grounding but can you tell us why grounding is also a good thing to do to protect yourself against EMF? The product of, of being in this EMF smog generates a lot of positive ions in our system mm. and they're cumulative. Um, so of course the very best way to dissipate those is to contact the earth which is negative as you remember from your days in physics. <laughs> a few years ago, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, but one of the problems in the, in the modern world, particularly in a city like Singapore, is everybody's insulated from the ground. Right. We've got concrete slabs everywhere, we've got marble floors in our houses, um, people are walking around in rubber sole shoes, flip-flops, whatever and they're insulating us from the ground. Mm. What we really want to try to do is to make contact with the earth on a daily basis. Mm. So one can either go for a, you know, a walk in bare feet on the grass and allow this positive charge to dissipate into the negative earth yeah, yeah. because that forms your electrical circuit. Yeah. Yes. Um, or from a more new age perspective, we can go and hug a tree or something like that. But it doesn't matter what you do, we need to connect with the planet. Mm. I mean the planet real. Yeah. I'm not talking about the layer, the artificial layer that we've put on the top of it. Mm. We've got to be connecting with the soil. Mm. And that's quite an interesting point actually, I don't know whether you want to include this here or not. But there's one of the reasons that, that people that work in their own vegetable plots and allotments and gardeners are so calm and yeah, grounded. Right. Because they've always got their hands in this. They're never yeah. getting a chance for their body to build up this positive charge. Right. They're in harmony with the planet. Absolutely. So we, we make a distinction between what's man-made and what's natural. And, absolutely. And we're trying to get back but more to a natural kind of vibration within the body rather than just chase after all of this electrosmog, which we think is good for us on our uh, social media and everything else. We've kind of got that addiction thing to things that genuinely exactly. aren't in resonance with, with us. And I think the place that the, that the EMF protectors have for us in the modern world is when we can't stick our feet on the ground every day, when you have something in your pocket that's going to help your body to deal with this stuff. Right. Knowing that at the first opportunity you're going to go out there in the garden with socks off and walk on the wet grass and dissipate all of this. Yeah. But in places, in many places in the modern world now, it's very difficult to do that. And they're the places where these positive charges are building up so much more quickly. Right. In, in all modern cities and, and even like, you know, outside the city now. Exactly. We've got the cell towers and, and we got, you can't get away from but it. it. But it isn't just those. It's, it's, it's your fluorescent lights in your shopping malls. Yeah. It's the transformers that are driving all this. It's, mm. the, it's the railways. It's the cars, which are surrounded by computers now. Everybody's on an aeroplane, you know. Yeah. But the big difference is obviously you've now got this very powerful device in your pocket and it's yeah. in there all the time and many people you know, sleep with it under their pillows or yes. at least near their energy field. So yes. that's what we're trying to raise awareness about is the fact that this thing now means that you do have an onus on yourself not to look for the scientific world to try and tell you what's right or wrong but to just yes. look into what will help you and then take positive action. So I wanted to ask you one other question, which is about uh, the muscle test. So uh, we're going to come on to this later and do a muscle test with uh, a range of products. But if you pass a muscle test, what's that telling you about your body? Is it telling you that you're safe, safer, or that that day you were safe? Or what, what does it tell us? So if, if you're reacting positively to something in the face of EMF, and it seems to be cancelling out, what can that tell us about our health? The basic rule of muscle testing is um, things that are bad for us will temporarily weaken us. Right. Things that are beneficial for us will strengthen you up. So all muscle testing, no matter what we're testing for, starts from this perspective, is that we're looking for things that weaken the system, we're looking for things to build it back up again. Right. Great. 
Well, thanks very much, David. Uh, thanks for coming in and answering some questions for us. Really appreciate that. Um, and uh, you can find out about David and his services uh, at the bottom of this video. Thank you. Thank you. We are currently living through the time of an unprecedented biological experiment where no valid safety testing is being done to keep you safe. The Omnia Radiation Balancer has a unique solution to the effects of the omnipresent radiation fields we are walking through 24-7. Head to www.omniabalance.life to find out more. Thank you. Can I stop there? What was yeah. your question? Um. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>